Well, here we go, Whistle Watchers, another exciting round of the Six Nations. Now, let's get straight into it. Right, let's get into Whistle Watch, and I'm sure some of you will have watched and hopefully enjoyed as well uh, whistleblowers showing how much time and dedication and how much hard work a refereeing job is. Um, but a very enjoyable watch as well. Now, as you'd have seen in that from the preparation work, one of the main areas that the referee need to be sure that they are strong in the game is space. Because unless you have space, you just won't have attacking rugby. So, and it's very important to set that standard of getting space early on. So, if you look at the France Island game, a good example of this, uh, we're only about three minutes 40, three minutes 43 uh, into the game, and we have uh, France number two offside. Good decision by the referee, sets the standard early. And what that means is, the players then tend to react. They know, right, we've got to show um, that we are clearly on side, we've got to show that we are giving the space. Because um, if you don't penalise that early, the players then will just push and push and push and you don't have space. So a good example there of a referee setting the standards early, which helps then the flow and opens um, up the game. So very important as a referee, you set your standards early, but important as well that you don't go too much of the way and just penalise everything in the first 10 minutes for the sake of setting your standards. And I thought the referees on the weekend uh, got that balance very, very well. Okay, talking points in the France Island game. We have the tackle by William S on Porter. Good referral here uh, by the match officials, sending it to the bunker because it is a debatable one, as I'll explain in a minute. And then we have the game continuing and then the bunker coming back and giving referee the, the decision. Now, this is a very, very tough one. A lot of you would have been on a yellow card, a lot of you questioning why it's not a red card. So if you felt that Williamson was going in to make a, a legal tackle and because of Porter's drop in height, this then is mitigation. And then therefore we don't have a red card, we have a yellow card because obviously we have established there is head contact, we have established that there is foul play. Now, if you felt that Williams went in and wasn't legal, so it means he was always illegal. There was no way he was going to be making a legal tackle, whatever happened. Then mitigation does not play a part in it, and then you'd have a red card. So this simply comes down to, if you felt that the French tackler was always illegal, no mitigation, red card. If you felt there was mitigation because he would have been making, in the end, a legal tackle or a legal clear out, then we have the mitigation coming into play and you have a yellow card. Okay, uh, you would probably gather by now that my um, pronunciations of names and places and other languages apart from Welsh and English is not very good. So, Willemsem, I believe. Apologies, um, William Willemsem. Um, I should know this by now because I've refereed him many times. Right then, on 52-45 in the Island France game as well, TMO try or no try? Now, the on-field decision is a try. Now, you can see the TMO getting a little bit frustrated here because he's not getting the angles he wants from the director to show to the match officials on the field and also for him to see himself. Now, when they actually do get the footage, you can't really have any clear evidence. Remember, if the on-field decision is given by a referee, so he's given an on-field decision try, or if he's given an on-decision no try, if he gives his on-field decision, the TMO has to have clear evidence to prove that that decision was wrong or not the correct one. We don't have any clear footage. Some of you are thinking, well, I don't think he has scored. Some of you are thinking, well, I think he has scored, which means we don't have any clear footage or evidence to overrule the on-field decision. So quite rightly so, the on-field decision remains as a try. Now then, let's move to Rome, uh, Italy, England. We have Elliot Daly given a yellow card for a trip. Now, a trip is an illegal action. An ankle tap is something totally different. So you ankle tap somebody, perfectly legal. It's not a tackle, which means a player carrying the ball can then get back up on his feet as long as he does so immediately and play on because it's an ankle tap, not a tackle. But a trip is not legal and therefore, quite rightly so, a yellow card given. Wow. I was in the stadium on Saturday, and if you're a Welshman, you'd be disappointed first half. Second half, what an amazing game of rugby. Certainly, as the old adage goes, a game of two halves. Now then, if you listen to the game, after about three, maybe four, I'm pretty sure after three penalties early on in the first half, Wales gave away three penalties or offside quite early. 
Better keep the referee warning Wales, listen, if you have another one for offside now, it could be a yellow card. Wales then adjusted to that. They only gave another penalty away, I think, maybe late in the first half or even maybe in the second half. So the penalty count was very low, so there was no follow through on the yellow card. Scotland in the second half gave, I think, 12 penalties, maybe more, uh, on the trot against Wales. So. The referee warned Scotland, uh, then we have a yellow card for um, um, deliberate foul or, coll or collapsing the mall. Now, because the referee's given one yellow card, it doesn't mean then that you restart again. He's given his warning, and then we have a couple of penalties again, and the Scottish um, centre, Tupelotu, has given two penalties away. He's already given a team warning, but he's now given an offside away. So referee plays advantage, and then a little bit later, he gives another offside away again, around three or four phases later. So the referee is quite correct here, and a good decision by the referee, because he's already given a team warning, and also we have two infringements with the same player in a short period of time. Now, some people are asking, why wasn't Scotland giving another yellow card when they gave a couple of penalties away later on? Well, after you've given a second yellow card, there wasn't then a penalty by Scotland for quite a bit of time in the game, so therefore it's not an automatic yellow. Now, if they continue to give penalties away, then the referee may have well given another yellow or then reminded them of a warning. So, on this decision, a correct decision by the referee and good game management. Now, big talking point in the Wales-Scotland game as well was the tackle by Crosby on Castello. Now, Castello goes off the field and does not return because of the head contact, but we can't take that into account. We have to deal with the facts that happen. So, the TMO alerts the teams of officials, is what you want in the game. When the referee doesn't see something or assistance doesn't, the TMO comes in and says, we'd like to have a look at this. They have a look at it. There is no illegal action here by Crosby. Everything he's doing is perfectly legal. The only way that this can then become foul play, because he's doing everything legal, is if you felt that he knew Costello was in that position, he knew that his head was around there, and by continuing, he may have made contact with the head, then it becomes reckless. And if you felt it was reckless, then it would be foul play, and there probably wouldn't be mitigation, because there's no drop in height in Costello, and you're probably looking at a red card. But in this instance, and this was my gut feeling at the time as well, and I tend to agree with the referees here, they didn't feel there was any act of foul play because there was nothing that Crosby could have done. He was going in legally, he couldn't do anything to change by seeing Costello there, and it's a complete rugby collision, and therefore, as we mentioned to you before, not every head contact is foul play. So on this occasion, I tend to agree with the referees, a good decision by the match officials, no foul play because there was nothing he could do to avoid what happened, which means he wasn't being reckless or careless. And there you go. I hope that helps you understand some of the decisions on the weekend. Now then, this really is my favourite part of Whistlewatch, answering your Emirates fans' question. And on a very sad week for Welsh rugby, actually, uh, Chris Bradley asked, Hi Nigel, after the sad news of Barry John's passing, would you rate him as the greatest 10 ever? When the New Zealanders call you the king, you've got to be something special. So I would certainly say that he will go down as probably the greatest of the greatest. That's how talented he was um, and left a huge legacy. Just remember Barry John finished at 27 years of age, probably could have played another four or five years of rugby as well. They always tell you that you should always leave the stage or leave the field when people are wanting more. And Barry John did that. And that's probably one of his legacies that will be remembered as as the greatest. Ah, Philip Frat won us. Hi, Nigel. Can you explain why there wasn't a TMO review? Now, this was a clear, completed tackle by Allen. Mitchell was held while on the ground and he should have left the ball. Italia, very unlucky on this decision. There are protocols in place what the TMO can come in or can't come in for. So the TMO can come in for foul play and that can go back for anything from whistle to whistle. So even though there could have been 20 rucks before a try is scored or before a stoppage, the TMO can come in and they either go back to check the foul play. Now, if it's a technical decision, so it's not foul play, you can only come in for something within two phases of when a try is scored. So remember, a try has to be scored. If a try is scored and there's been a knock-on within the last two phases, then that is within protocol, you can check it. If it's on this occasion, it's outside the TMO protocol. At Gareth John asks, uh, at Nigel Dreffer wins, uh, can the ref give a penalty try even though Wales score off a driving wall? If so, 
then we could have won the game because Wales missed that conversion. That's a very, very good question and a very, very good point. The referee here is 100% correct because the laws of penalty try are, penalty try would be given if a team would have probably scored but did not so because of foul play or because of a cynical infringement by the opposition, or they would have scored in a better position. I.e., so instead of scoring where they did, they would have scored, say, 10 metres further in, which means the conversion would have been easier. Now, on this instance, I think even as a Welshman, you have to admit there was no way Wales were going to score in anywhere else but in line with where they scored. So because they did score, and wouldn't have scored in a better position for the kick at goal, the referee is 100% correct. That's it. Thank you very much for your MRS fans' questions. Another big weekend of Six Nations to come. I can't wait. A special mention to a good friend of mine as well, uh, Luke Pierce, who will be refereeing his 50th international on the weekend. Congratulations, Luke, and have a great game. See you all next week. Till then, bye-bye.